Good morning. This is March 29th, 2021. Almost April Fool's Day. No joke here though, right? Um, I'm Dawn Litchfield Brown. Joining me today is John Kincaid. And as usual, I'll bring you up to date on a couple of little things. And then John's got some cool stuff he wants to share with us. I also want to say a shout out to my sister-in-law, Kim. Hi, thanks for watching. Sent us a really nice email. We appreciate that. Absolutely. We? we do. Um, taxes. I, I know it seems like I'm a broken record, but last time when we did this, I, I didn't know, because it came out right after, that the filing date has been changed to May 17th. So if you've all been freaking out out there about getting your tax stuff ready, I have mine ready, of course. Um, you have a little more time. I'm not sure why they did that. They did it last year, but I'm not sure why they did it this year since I believe most CPAs are back to work. But anyway, good news, you have more time to get your taxes in. The other thing I wanted to share is our new website. Okay, we had a soft launch on Friday, which means only those of us who are listening and who have worked on it for the last year. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, John. Thank you, Nico. Thank you, Cecily and Larry. I So many people have helped on the, the website. So we want to encourage you to go and check it out. And I, I'm probably going to regret saying this, but please, if you find any errors, any typos, anything, send us an email so we can get it right. John did a great job proofing it, but after a while, I just look at it and look at it and I see this, the right word <laughs> every time. So it's NaplesMoneyManagers.com, not the, just NaplesMoneyManagers.com. And it'll come up. I want to point you to the new section called the Van Winkle. And we've got a great new section on our double income strategy. So anyway, we're super excited. It's got a little ways to go. Like I said, it's a soft launch, but we hope you love it. So, okay, John, what do you want to talk about? Well, <laughs> I'm intrigued by what the big firms talk about now in 2021, as far as- You mean bigger than us? Much bigger than <laughs> okay. us, right. Uh, these are the Merrills and the Morgan Stanleys, uh, which do, they do a great job with their research. I found a company that manages nine trillion dollars. Okay, that's so not it's us. a large company, mm -hmm. um, a, a very reputable, you know, company. Does well for their investors, but their headline from one of their advisors to me was redesign your portfolio for twenty twenty one. Okay, that caught my eye. I'm always interested in what they're telling us to do if, if we were clients, for instance. So they gave us three things so to do. So we would know what not to do. Right, so, <laughs> so because of 2020, uh, this company came out and, and gave three things that should be done if, if you hold the portfolio. And they said, first of all, because the challenge in low rates right now, we're basically at zero right. and people cannot find income from bonds or the typical places, they seniors are starving. Seniors are starving. See that on our new website. They suggested a barbell approach to U.S. Treasuries. Okay. That's a 1.4 percent yield. So what they're saying is, anybody knows the old barbell, right? There's a big ball on each end and a right. bar in the middle, and they balance out, right? Right. So you have you have one-year treasuries on one side and right. you have 30-year treasuries on the other. Really? That's it, that's the barbell. That's their barbell. That's their barbell and uh, it, it generates 1.44% of yield. Great. So that kind of, uh, I thought about that and I thought that this, these are their best, these are their best ideas. The other thing was go beyond the 60-40 typical allocation. Right, so is. basically they say you take your age and you subtract it from 100. So I'm 66, if I subtract it from 100, right, 44% of my portfolio, 34% uh, of my portfolio should be in stocks and 66% of my portfolio should be in bonds. Now what are they saying? So what they're saying is instead of using bonds, we, we want you to consider alternative investments. Mm -hmm. So alternative investments are those type of investments, uh, some real estate, uh, a lot of energy stock as far as art and, and wine and other things. But these companies have these uh, alternative investments 
uh, package now, and so you can buy them easily. And like hedge funds, right? Those are considered alternative investments. Right, right. So to hedge, that's why they're called hedge funds, to hedge the market to protect. Right, and usually, usually the, the contents of those uh, portfolios don't directly correlate to the Dow or the S&P, meaning if the S&P moves up, everything that you own moves up. If it moves down, everything moves down. So they try to provide something that's not connected with that fluctuation in order to offer some, sure. some help. The unfortunate thing is, is I went to their website and looked at their alternative investment portfolio and uh, they've performed at about three and a half percent for the last couple of years. So that, that's not working. The last thing they said was, why don't you go beyond the typical equity allocation, the typical stocks, the blue chip stocks, mm -hmm. dividend stocks, and why don't you go to the ESG stuff? Now, ESG is a new... Uh, um, the econo ec what is it? Eco ec ecology sensitive? Well, yeah, is that the one? It's environment. Environment. It's social and it's corporate government. Okay. Governance, right? Governance, all governance. right. So that's kind of the new buzzword over the last five years or so. And a lot of these companies are providing portfolios with this ESG message. And they've been around forever, by they, the way. They've been around a long time. And, not, and they not, never made any money for the longest time. Right. And now so, they're more popular. Right. So then I thought to myself, okay, if I'm an investor, so I'm going to look at what their, what their ESG portfolio has done. And so I pulled up their ESG portfolio. Yes. And then I compared their ESG portfolio to the Vanguard 500, which is basically the index. Right. And I found out that every stock in the S&P 500, the, Van De the Vanguard fund, was basically cloned in the ESG. Which has to be impossible. I Which mean, has to be impossible. So you're taking the same big tech risk, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, uh, all those, and I'm not sure if they really qualified for ESG. My point isn't to knock this company, but to be very careful as a, as a traditional retail investor on what you're being told might help hedge risk. Well, hedge risk or make you feel socially responsible. I think that's probably where this is all going and has it in the name. So do we take the time to look at all the securities inside of this fund and say, is it really a socially responsible fund? And is that what I want? Or how much of my portfolio do I want in there? The, the other thing that I got from Vanguard, a fellow at Vanguard that I talked to now and then, sent me a, a fact, a fact sheet that showed that 80% of retired investors from 65 to 85 have the majority of their assets in stocks and those stocks have uh, risk factors that are probably way beyond those investors intention so, so I another, absolutely they're believe taking that. increased okay. risk so if we I'm gonna go back to the website right. because what you lead right into what we've been talking about and there's we call these calls to action but if there's like 19 of them which eventually we will cut down after we see which ones people like. So there's one about seniors are starving for income. Right. It's very, very important. How do you get enough income to live without spending your principal? Because if you spend your principal, the next year you have less income and it just goes down and down. And we actually have a chart that shows that inside the site. The other is we have um, a skeleton with, I believe has glasses on. And it's basically how long do you wait? So we're getting a lot of this, market is so high, I'm afraid to go in, market is so high, what should I do, I need income, and trying to make this not too long, but we find that people wait until the market drops about 40% before they come in and see us. Now, there's signs all along the way. Maybe they're not getting the service they think they should get. Maybe their name is always spelled wrong. Maybe the person on the other end of the phone never knows who they are. Maybe their portfolio isn't exactly the way they think it should be. Maybe it's not really being managed. All of these things. But when the market is going up, people don't want to make a move because things are going well. I'm going to encourage people out there who are not clients, by the way, you don't need to move, <laughs> to take a look at your portfolio. And if you're unhappy, look at moving at least some of it while the market is high. I'm not saying go all into cash. I'm just saying take it to a different place for maybe a different strategy, which is what John is talking about. Right. I, I was a little concerned reading. You know, this is a big company, a global company that suggested these three things. And I guess in, in, in very general terms, that's okay. 
But it, it just goes to show you that you have to really have somebody that's looking after your money and matching that to really what your goals are. Absolutely. Otherwise, you totally get lost in the Well, crowd. yeah, the barbell of what you just told me, that's ridiculous. And anyway, I'm, <laughs> I was shocked when you said right. that. I was just blown away because you have to, as you said, look at each person individually, Absolutely. figure out what they need, figure out what their le risk levels are, and help them get through it all. So with that, we're going to encourage you to look at our website. By the way, we do much better than an average of 25 or 3.5% return. We can produce at least 6% income without increasing risk, which is pretty amazing. So spread the word, read the site or look at it, give us some feedback. And remember, it's a soft launch. We haven't really marketed it yet, but we will after we hear from all of you. I'm Dawn Litchfield Brown. This is John Kincaid. And remember, money matters, but most of all, and most importantly, you matter. Have a great day.